Hello everyone, you are watching Competing Views on the Bible, How to Treat Them. If you've ever watched any of my videos before, the first thing you might notice is that I actually am recording my screen on my computer, uh, which I've never done in the past. The second thing that you may or may not notice is I don't have a script. Usually I would prepare by writing a script, and then I would just read off the script, um, I would edit the video a lot. Um, I may edit this video a little bit, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Um, so I'm, I'm planning on making videos like this in the future, just so you know. Though I'm still also planning on making the other videos too. So, um, competing views on the Bible, how to treat them. There are two ways, or two uh, perspectives that you could have of competing views on the Bible. The first way is, or the first perspective is, if you don't have many views yourself concerning the Bible. So um, you might not know very much about the Bible. You might um, know a little bit, but not enough to really have that many views. So when you hear other people talking, uh, disagreeing with each other, things like that, then sometimes it might be confusing to you. Um, it might annoy you. Um, you know, like uh, people would say, oh, those religious people, they're always disagreeing with each other and all that stuff, but you don't have any views, so that might be how, uh, you don't have many views on the Bible, so that might be how you feel about it. So when people disagree about uh, how, how you should baptize people, how people should be baptized, should they be baptized as babies, should they be baptized as adults, um, when people talk about like on YouTube, they're, one of the things that people like to talk about is Nephilim. Uh, who were the Nephilim? People could argue about that. Um, so the other view that you could have or um, perspective that you can have on different people's views is you do have uh, a lot of views about things in the Bible. Um, so if this is you, then you probably, when you hear people's views, you might, instead of, you know, not really having a view about it, you might agree with them, you might disagree with them. You might still um, not have a view about everything, but you do have, you know, a decent amount of views, at least about as much as everyone else seems to. So those are the two different ways. Um, for someone who doesn't have many views on the Bible, um, I would suggest, because I the only way I can think of that you cannot have many views um, would be if you just don't really know the Bible that much, or maybe you don't care. But if you don't care, then why are you watching this video? So I would suggest that you try to find someone who you can trust that seems to be knowledgeable about the Bible and is trying to find the truth. I would say hide under their wings for now. Um, concerning different things that maybe you, you're not really sure about, but intend to eventually learn more so that you can have your own views and search for the truth yourself. Um, this is something that I actually did um, not that long after, well, some, uh, sometime after I started reading the Bible for the first time, um, I got a Ryrie study Bible. And I remember um, reading you know, the Bible, and then reading the uh, study notes or footnotes at the bottom. And uh, in my head, I was thinking, I'm going to trust Ryrie for now about what he says. But eventually, maybe once I'm finished reading the Bible one time or two times or three times, eventually I'm going to know enough and I'm going to have my own opinion. That's that's what I was thinking. That eventually I'm going to know, have my own opinion. I may disagree with him. I may agree with him. But for now, I just have to trust him. So um, that's the that's the view or the that's the attitude that I think that if you don't have opinion, a lot of opinions about the Bible because you don't really know much about the Bible, I think that's the attitude that would probably be the best to just to try and find someone to trust that you believe that you can trust for now, and then. As you learn more, then you kind of um, make your way out and and try and find the truth yourself instead of just trusting people. Um, 
So characteristics to look for in someone that you want to, that you're going to trust. Um, I would say that you want to find or try to find someone who is looking for the truth that you can tell is looking for the truth and seems to be willing to admit that they're wrong. And then also someone who is knowledgeable yet humble. And of course, being humble would also include being willing to admit that they're wrong. But I thought that maybe I should say it again, just in case. So that's what I would suggest for you. Now, the other person might have a lot of views on the Bible. For this person, I would say that you have to be careful. And I know that some people tend to be more this way than other people, so it depends. But we, we have to be careful. We have to realize, or we should realize, that other people might disagree with us, but that doesn't mean that their view isn't founded on Scripture. Though maybe it might not be, though it might not uh, be founded on scripture the way that we see it. You don't have to agree with everyone else. Just realize that some things can't be proven or disproved with the knowledge we currently have. Now, I'm not saying that it can never be proven or um, there is no, there is nothing that is true. I do believe that with every um, topic or with every um, idea, if there are things that disagree with each other, or if there can be things that disagree with each other, then only one thing is true and everything else is wrong. But it might be impossible for us to prove um, what is true, because we don't have enough knowledge to do that. Be humble with the knowledge that you may be wrong on some points as well, and try to be slow to assume that others who disagree with you disagree just because they're ignorant. Um, a lot of times, because we see it from our own views, obviously, it's easy for us to just assume, and I, I do this a lot more than I should, and I'm, I'm kind of realizing that it's, I've, I've realized recently that it's something bad to do um but i still i still can do it very easily but when because we have our own views we see it from our own perspective and it's easy for us to see it from our perspective because it's our perspective but it's you it take a lot of times it takes either something happening to make you see it from someone else's perspective or it takes intentionally seeing it from someone else's perspective, or at least trying to. Um, and when you don't see it from someone else's perspective, you can just assume that they came to their conclusions. They have their view about the Bible or something like that, or even about just the way life is, um, because they're ignorant. Because you have your own view, or I have my own view, and I think that I'm right. So if I'm right and someone else disagrees with me, first of all, I think they're wrong, which is okay, because how could I not think I'm right? So that's not an issue. But because I think that they're wrong, and I think that I'm right, and I do not see where they came from, how they came to that view, why they think that way, then it's easy for me to assume that, well, I came to my thinking the way that I did, and I'm right, so I took the right path, so they must have missed something. They, you know, they're reading the same Bible. Maybe they thought that, um, they said that Jesus betrayed, Jesus Iscariot betrayed Judas. Maybe they read it backwards or something like that. So, you know, that's why they think differently than me, because they just read it wrong. Or, um, they're, you know, they don't, they don't think about things. They just, People just tell them, and then they just believe them, which is very possible that people could do that, but it's easy to assume. So that's why I say be slow. Try to be slow to assume that others who disagree with you disagree just because they're ignorant, because it is possible that people just don't know. It's possible. But we need to be careful because a lot of times people do know, or they do have um, sound views, and sometimes, like I said, 
up here, it says, but their view might still be founded on scripture, though maybe not according to the way you see it. Um, I kind of want to explain that. What I mean by that is there are certain views on the Bible, not all views, but there are certain views on the Bible that are have been around for a while, and uh, some longer than others, and the reason why they've been around that long is because they're solid. They're founded on scripture, even if they disagree with each other. So um, you have different church denominations who generally believe different things, and the reason why they're all still around is because none of them can 100% disprove the other. Now, there's a lot of things that you can prove and disprove. Um, sometimes it's not necessarily a matter of proving that you're right. Sometimes it's a matter of just showing that your view makes more sense. So you can't necessarily prove that you're right, but you can you can uh, uh, show them that your view makes more sense. But there are also uh, certain views about different things in Scripture that all are founded on Scripture. It's just a different view. Sometimes it's even on the same verse. So, um, for example, like I said earlier in the video, I mentioned uh, baptism. Some people believe that you should baptize your infants. Um, that would be considered infant baptism. Some people believe that you should not baptize your infants. And uh, they believe that you need to be baptized as an adult. Those are called, the people who believe that are sometimes referred to as Anabaptists, which means to baptize again. Um, so you have different, You, I, I can't, I would have to do studying to get into that, but so I can't go into that in this video, but I would guess, based off of what I've seen, the different views and stuff like that, and as I've gotten, as I've seen different people's views about scripture, um, I've kind of come to start to realize that a lot of these different views you know, if they lay it all out on the table, if they say this verse, this verse, this verse, and this verse, this all shows that I'm right. It does make sense if you view it their way. If you, but but you disagree with them because you don't. So they might say, "See, this verse over here means this," and you might say, "No, it means this over here." Um, there is a verse in Psalms, which if I was thinking about it, maybe I should have prepared it and put it up here, but there's a verse in Psalms where David is talking about how his mother conceived him in sin. Some people believe because of that verse, there might be other verses in scripture too, that, um, we are born sinners and, and they would probably point to that verse saying that other people would look at the same verse and say, no, that's just, um, that's just uh, poetical uh, terminology. He's just expressing himself. He's just expressing, who am I? I'm just a, I'm just a sinful man. I'm so, I'm so pathetic that I was even born into sin. Even when I was conceived in my, in my mother's womb, I was in sin. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he really was in sin. So even with that, you have disagreements. And that is a perfect example that I can think of, of how you can have two opposing views, whether we are born sinners or whether we are born and, well, I guess uh, born into a sinful world, but yet that doesn't, just being born doesn't make us a sinner. In on one verse, you can disagree on that on one verse. So that's my point. Um, I'm sorry for rambling a little bit. Um, I'm still kind of getting used to this uh, since this is my first video. Hopefully I get better at this. So thank you for watching. There's actually one more thing that I wanted to say that I uh, almost forgot there. Um, I would appreciate it if you guys think that that the videos that I make are interesting or helpful or you to yourself or you think that maybe they would help someone else I would appreciate it if um, you'd be interested in in uh, supporting what I'm doing um, I'm actually trying to start a business 
Um, that's the idea. So if you would go to www.go-dine.com, you can buy uh, one of the products that are at the Donagla store. Uh, there's links to the Donagla store on my website. Or if you aren't interested in buying a product that I have right now, uh, but you are interested in supporting what I'm trying to do, then you could donate. So those are two options. So I just I just wanted to let you guys know. All right. Again, thank you for watching.